Okay, so we're getting into the very interesting concept of private and public IP. That may be too basic for you. I'm sorry if that is, but some people need help with this, so I'd rather help everyone. So networking is two sorts of IP. There is IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is what is most common, what probably you know already. It's basically four numbers separated by three dots. IPv6 is a bit less common. It has this very long strand string uh, of hexadecimal numbers and letters. And basically, in this course, we'll be using just IPv4. But know that AWS has support for IPv6 as well. IPv4 for right now is still the most common format used online. IPv6 is more for IoT or the Internet of Things. And basically, it solves a lot of problems. But not for us. We don't have any problems with IPv4 so far. IPv4 allows for 3.7 billion different addresses in a public space, and that's almost running out of IP addresses. And basically, each number can vary between 0 and 255 each way of the dots. So if you do the math, you get 3.7 billion different addresses. Now, let's have an example of what that means. If you have a web server and it's public, you know, that could be our EC2 instance, it'll have a public IP. And we can have another server with another public IP. And using the public IP, these servers can talk to one another, which is great. Now, when we have a company, for example, my company, and it has a private network, the private network basically has a private IP range. And private IPs have this very specific uh, way of being defined. But basically, that means that all the computers within that private network can talk to one another using the private IP. Whereas when you touch an internet gateway, which is a public gateway, well, these instances also will get access to other servers and so on. And so that's a common pattern in AWS. Now, basically, if you have another company, it will also have a private network. And within the private network, every computer can talk to one another. And maybe I'll also have an internet gateway with an IP and basically can connect all over the internet and talk to other servers, okay? So basically, the difference I want to show you is that when you have a public IP, you're accessible over the internet. And when you have a private IP, you're only accessible within your private network. So some differences. Uh, public IP, as I said, means that the machine can be identified on the internet. And the public IP must be unique across the whole web. So not two machines can have the same public IP. And I think that makes sense. And an IP, if I give you an IP, you can just Google it and you can find a geolocation. Whereas a private IP, it means that the machine can only be identified on the private network only. And the IP must be unique only across the private network. But two different private networks, so two different companies, can have the same private IPs. That is absolutely not a problem. And machines, when they're on the private network, they usually connect to the internet using an internet gateway. Okay. And finally, only a specified range of IPs can be used as private IPs. Finally, for elastic IPs, basically when you start and you stop an EC2 instance, it will change its public IP. And we'll see this in the hands-on. And if you need to have a fixed public IP for whatever reason for your instance, what you are going to need is it's called, called an elastic IP. So an elastic IP is what? It's a public IPv4, and you own it as long as you don't delete it. Basically, you can attach it to one instance at a time only, obviously. And basically, when you have an IP address, and it's elastic, you can basically use it to mask the failure of an instance or software by basically quickly moving it from one instance to another. But it's quite an uncommon pattern because you can only have five elastic IP in your account. Now, you can ask 3AWS to increase that, but it's quite rare to use them. Overall, I would recommend to try avoiding using elastic IP. They're often referring very poor architectural decisions. And instead, you should use a random public IP and assign a DNS name to it. Now, DNS, we'll see them at root 53. And it's something that's going to be much more in control for us and much more uh, scalable. Or later, as we'll see, we can also use a load balancer and not using public IP at all, which is the best pattern you can have for AWS. Now, let's go ahead and do a quick hands-on so we can get a good feeling for all these things. By default, our EC2 machine will come with a private IP for the internal AWS network, a public IP for the WW, so the World Wide Web. And then when we're doing SSH into our EC2 machines, we cannot use a private IP because we're not in the same network, unless you have a VPN. We can only use the public IP if you don't have a VPN. And if your machine is stopped and then started, the public IP can change. So now let's go and observe all these behaviors.